Good evening. Welcome to a Friday evening. If it's still evening, if it's after nine o'clock <laughs> edition of Mornings with Stanley. It was just one of those days, you know. I mean, it's just I, I just had all the stuff I was going to plan plan to do, and ministry happens. And um, good um, dear friend, member of the church, her husband, um, also a dear friend. Um, I was put on the hospice a couple weeks ago. and found out he probably will not make it to the weekend. And so I went over to, to their house today and I completely forgot about doing this. I was doing laundry. I did a lot of stuff today. Laundry and, um, well, laundry mostly <laughs> is what I ended up doing. I did take the dogs for a walk this morning, but I didn't do my rowing and I didn't do my resistance training, though I'm planning on doing that before I go to bed. I guess I won't do any rowing. I still have to finish doing laundry. I have to put my sheets back on my bed. So, anyway. Um, so, I was, I had a friend of mine called, a good pastor friend of mine who used to be in our conference, but now is in Louisiana. She was in Olney when I was in Newcastle. And anyway, she called me today. We hadn't talked in a long time. So, so that we talked and so that we talked probably a good 45 minutes to an hour. So catching up on stuff going on and that's all I know. Stanley was asleep on the couch, but he gets so excited when I come in here and put the camera on. I guess because, you know, I pet him all the time. But maybe not as much as he'd like, because I think he would like it all day long. Am I right, Stanley? I think he just, he wishes he was one of those small dogs he could climb into my lap, I think. Stanley, sit, sit, sit. Good boy. Good pup. I need to do this reading so I can get it online before it's a day late. I know a week ago, so one day I... I uploaded it and I on Facebook you upload it to the page and then you have to push post and I forgot to push post <laughs> I didn't see it till the next day so anyway so this will not be the first one this late I did get it on YouTube one time on the right day okay Stanley you gonna lay down you're about to make me kick you out <laughs> you don't want to leave do you come on let's get out come on come on Good boy. Oh, oh, oh. Good boy. <laughs> good puppy. You're a good boy. Okay, he doesn't like it when I do that. <clears throat> this is Friday of week 35. Granted to suffer high privilege. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, you should not believe in him, but also suffer for his sake, engaged in the same conflict which you saw and now hear to be mine. That's Philippians 1, 29-30. One would have thought this passage would read, For it has been laid on you as an obligatory duty not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. Instead, the word granted is used, implying that it was a privilege and honor to suffer for his sake. Instead of whining, complaining, and asking, why should this happen to me? We are told to look on suffering for Christ as our highest privilege and honor. It is suffering for Christ. Not all suffering, I think, is suffering for Christ. Anyway, <laughs> maybe how we handle our suffering is... Anyway, when Moses and Elijah talked with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration, the account says, Who appeared in glory and spoke of his departure, which he was to accomplish at Jerusalem. That's Luke 9.31. He was to accomplish his departure. His death at Jerusalem. Usually death is looked on as an acquiescence, a submission to the inevitable. Here it was an accomplishment. Jesus accomplished more in the few hours on the cross than he did in all the rest of his lifetime. He opened his heart to the world's sin and sorrow and allowed it all to be forced through the channel, the single channel of his own broken heart. That broken heart was the healing of the world. It was granted to him to suffer, and that granted suffering became his chief glory. Whether the suffering be a pinprick or a stab, 
It is granted to us to take it and do what Jesus did with his departure, accomplish something through it. An invalid, blind, and paralyzed for years organized Courage Incorporated with 250 members. When asked about its conclusions, he said, I wouldn't trade all the insights I have gained through my years of suffering for my health back again. He accepted his suffering as granted by God to accomplish Courage Incorporated. I think he was talking about kind of what I was alluding to. That, you know, is how we deal with our suffering. It's not that God gives us suffering, but, um, but life brings suffering. And how do we deal with it? And, um, you know, there's, <clears throat> I think that, you know, there's martyrdom and there's other suffering that's not martyrdom. And, um, and I don't think Jones is really talking about martyrdom here. But I remember when I worked in, uh, in Virginia, First Baptist Church, where I was an intern, singles ministry intern. Yes. They have a, they did at that time. They may still have it, but a, a fantastic divorce recovery program. It's huge. Lots of people there. And I worked. There were four of us interns um, from seminary that were at the church, and I worked with the oldest group of adults. And um, and I remember a lot of them were through had come into the church through divorce recovery, and they were all say they would never have gone. They would never have chosen divorce. They would never, they wouldn't want to go through it again, but they were closer to God because of it, because of their suffering. They, um, it, it did bring them back to, to a relationship with God. So, so anyway, I think that's what one thing Jones is saying, but maybe that's just, maybe it's deeper than that as well. But here's our prayer for today. Oh God, our father, when life gives me a pinprick or a stab, give me the insight to see in this an opportunity to be grateful for your grant. If we handle them together, we can make them both into accomplishments. Amen. On our affirmation for the day, everything that happens, good, bad, or indifferent, is an opportunity for accomplishment. Jesus is Lord.